The coronavirus outbreak has killed thousands of people across the United States, but thousands more have survived. Those who make it through the worst symptoms of COVID-19 tell harrowing tales. Brian Todd tonight asking survivors and experts about that experience. It hurts like hell. Sharika Williams' horrible ordeal is just about over. The nurse who cares for the elderly at a nursing home in Tennessee says when she was in the deepest throes of coronavirus, she had to fight off thoughts of planning her own funeral. You can barely eat. You can barely walk. You can't breathe because it hurts so bad. With tens of thousands of Americans being diagnosed with coronavirus daily and hundreds each day dying, there's also a growing number of people recovering from COVID-19. And what they're going through can serve as a guide to millions. How do you know when you're coming out of it? The most important things to look for are better are improvements in your breathing. Dr. Michael Mina from Harvard also says if you're coming out of the virus, your dry coughs might start to lift, your fevers might come down. But he warns you might also have false signals of recovery. Don't be fooled by one good day. To really be sure that you're, that you're really kicking this virus and putting it behind you, it usually takes multiple days, three or four or five days, of continuously feeling better and better, improving your energy, improving your breathing. Then there's what one recovering patient calls the Rip Van Winkle effect. David Latt spent 17 days in the hospital and was on a ventilator for six days without even knowing it. When I came back from off the ventilator, uh, I kind of just went back to what I was talking and thinking about right before I went on the ventilator, even though it had been a week ago. I had asked my husband to bring some, some books to the hospital, and so I asked him, oh, did you bring those books? I just, I, it didn't really dawn on me yet. Experts say amnesia or delirium in recovering coronavirus patients usually goes away. But caregivers have to watch out for long-term effects in those who've had acute cases of the virus. The inf inflammatory response to the body can sometimes really do um, sometimes permanent damage to people, um, whether that's damage to your lungs from the virus and the immune system's response to that virus, or whether to um, brain tissue, both all sorts of things can go wrong when you're in the intensive care unit. Patients can also come out the other side stronger with antibodies, your immune system's memory of the virus that could help fight it off again. Survivor Diana Barrett is donating her plasma so others can benefit from her antibodies. I like to think of it as a superhero. Me and all of the other survivors, we have these internally built hazmat suits. And the experts do say that survivors' antibodies might indeed keep them from getting sick a second time, but there's still no guarantee of that. They say recovered patients might still be able to spread the virus to others.